Garrett here from Garden First Cannabis. I'm a grower, a music junkie, and an avid outdoorsman. I'm always looking for new ways to better myself and my garden. Join me as we go behind the scenes to meet the incredible people behind today's most successful cannabis brands and hear the stories of their journey. This is Deep Roots. Right now, this restaurant's super cool. We got a bunch of movie paraphernalia everywhere. This is owned by one of our uh, our partners in the in the cultivation down near the old Las Vegas near Fremont Street. And uh, this is the Millennium Bar. Robert, you're kind of a sci-fi buff, aren't you? Uh, I recognize a few things in here, not too many <laughs> things though. How long you been in uh, in the cannabis space? I uh, just. Been in cannabis, this is my first cannabis job really, so I've just been in for about three years. Oh nice, what were you doing before that? Um, so I had all kinds of crazy jobs, from like restaurant jobs, I worked for the post office for six years, I did a reality TV show for six years. What reality TV show? Oh, uh, it was Sister Wives. Uh, sister Wives? Yeah, so it was actually really cool, they are really cool people. Were you one of the sisters or the wives? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> no, I was doing the audio. Audio? So micing people up, holding yeah, the Shout boom. out to Galen. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they ended up moving out of Vegas and uh, I was in, in between jobs, didn't know really what to do. Um, I met Paul, uh, he told me I could come help them out at the cultivation, he told me I could help out in sales, gave me a couple accounts, and I got us more accounts and in more stores, and it's just kind of worked out, so I'm very fortunate. So Redwood Cultivation, how'd you guys come up with that name? We're searching for the right location for us. Uh, those spaces were far and few between in the whole state that met the perfect criteria that the state would approve. We finally, uh, reached out to friends in, uh, around the community that we knew. We found the, the perfect spot, and it just so happens it ended up being on the corner of Redwood and Gary Street. And so uh, we went with the name Redwood because the tradition of the name and the culture. And uh, the, it, we got real lucky there because my father's name is actually Gary. <laughs> and that would have been, if the mailbox would have been on more of the Gary side, we would have been named Gary's Cultivation. You would have been Gary Cultivation. <laughs> no disrespect to your father, but I think Redwood Cultivation sounds a little better. <laughs> so you've got your in-house brand, Redwood Cultivation, um, but it seems like, you know, I, I've seen some grows, you know, subcontract grow for a brand before, but I've, I've never seen a facility that's got three, four, five different sub-brands that, that they're processing. How did you kind of come to you know, landing all these licensing agreements and, and you know, choosing that path as your business model? Well, we, th we have the Redwood brand, which is 60% of our business, and we like to keep it that way. We currently sell with Tyson Ranch, Tommy Chong, and Cookies, which have all done great for us. Have you been able to meet Mike Tyson uh, since, uh, you know, growing for his brand these last few years? We interact with Mike all the time. We've been down to his the Tyson Ranch uh, training facility where, uh, where actually he trains for boxing. Uh, the first question we get is uh, how much does Tyson really smoke? If you ask Mike, he smokes 25 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. What up, Mike? Good to see you again, man. Likewise. Well, this room feels like a, a propagation and, uh, and veg room should. I can feel the sweat you know, coming on my brow. It's nice and humid. Um, you've got some really beautiful structures on these moms. Um, they look really, really strong. Uh, tell me a little bit about you guys' propagation process. So, of course, everything starts with the mothers. You gotta make sure that you have healthy plants for healthy cuts, for healthy clones. This is where we harvest our, our cuttings. Um, takes about seven to 12 days to root depending on the variety. What varieties right now are like rooting really fast for you? Is it uh, generally a sativa indica thing or is it kind of all over the place? You know, everything is mostly a hybrid nowadays, but what I'm seeing uh, typically some of the more sativa dominant varieties 
I've always noticed that as well is, uh, you know, the sativas, they'll root faster, they drink faster earlier, you know, they just tend to grow more vigorously in early veg, um, you know, whereas those indicas kind of stay squatter. So I've always cloned in Rockwool as well myself. You know, why'd you guys make that decision? Yeah, Rockwool is an amazing product. Uh, we're on their uh, white foil wrappers, uh, their new and improved 2.0 version. The product really keeps uh, an even water content from the top of the cube to the bottom for excellent and uh, vigorous root development. Yeah, honestly, I've seen a lot of facilities using um, using grow down cubes. They're pretty much the industry standard at this point, but I have never seen a veg room um, this organized and clean, uh, you know, and just uniform. Yeah, I've been seeing that, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of talk in the industry right now about like, you know, they're calling it like crop steering, right? So it's like water content of the soil and humidity and temperature and, and you know, really dialing everything into, you know, put your plant structure and everything to the best of its ability. And I know Grodan, they've got a whole um, you know, digital system where you can kind of track that and monitor what's going on. Absolutely. Um, you know, everything that we're constantly doing is uh, crop steering. We're trying to influence a certain type of growth uh, for the plants, either vegetative or generative. So how many times uh, are you feeding a day? You know, you've got a couple of those grow scents uh, throughout uh, the room, I imagine, at different stages of the cycle, and you're tracking that water content. Do you try to water like as often as possible to keep within a certain range? Yeah, once we get onto uh, the six by six Hugo, we implement the grow sense sensors. We implement uh, one per batch of plants per variety, right. uh, so we can watch the plants eat and drink throughout the vegetative growth process as well as the flowering. So obviously there's a lot of touch and feel involved with being a grower. You know, uh, we, a lot of us have been doing this well before we had all this data, um, but I imagine the grow sense system is allowing you to kind of look at things from a whole nother level and uh, improve in different ways. Uh, you know, how specifically has it, has it helped you um, get better at certain things? Grow sense is a game changer. It uh, really allows us to see how each variety is eating and drinking. We're monitoring constantly the water content, the electrical conductivity, and the root zone temperature of each variety. Are there some numbers that you shoot for, for you know, water content and temperature and all that? Uh, it's all variety dependent, absolutely. Um, temperature, we try and keep in the 70s in the root zone. Um, as far as EC and water content, that's all variety dependent. You know, typically in veg, we're trying to keep a, a higher water content um, throughout the day and then dry back by the end of the day. In flower, we do some uh, dry backs in between waterings where we're influencing more generative growth. And so you're kind of watering several times a day in flower or just on a daily basis or how, how are you rocking those? So in veg, we water multiple times a day as well with some of the larger uh, stages of plants. But in flower, absolutely, we're watering many times a day, sometimes uh, as many as eight or nine times a day. So the grow sense system, it's sending you a bunch of data. Uh, is there any like kind of alert system it can do to kind of troubleshoot any issues that might happen in your rooms? Absolutely, we're able to set uh, alerts based on uh, water content or electrical conductivity getting too high or low. Um, sends it directly to our phones, our emails, and uh, we go and inspect the, the zone. We got some really good looking moms, clearly putting a lot of thought into uh, the way you're propagating and moving them through. Uh, so let's go check out what's next in the bedroom. Let's go. If it's before two o'clock, we're drinking Bloody Marys. If it's after two o'clock, we're drinking Marks. So we're going to get ourselves a Bloody Mary right now. Margaritaville. What's up, man? We're in uh, the veg room at uh, Redwood Cultivation. There's not a mite in sight, and I hear that's largely thanks to your products. What's happening? I'm Dan Balma. I'm the president and CEO of Central Ghost Garden Products. We're the maker of Green Cleaner. We're based out of Salinas, California. 
So I started using Green Cleaner in my basement when it was a bottle this big, and I've been using it all through my commercial career to a bottle this big. Um, and you know, there's a lot of DIY recipes on the internet, on every forum you can read, you know, a million different ways to mix soap and water and alcohol together uh, to make something that's gonna, you know, allegedly kill mites. Tell me, uh, you know, a little bit about how you guys developed the product and, you know, why it works a little different than your average horticultural soap. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our original founder and my partner now, Mark Carlin, um, developed Green Cleaner in his garage and in his greenhouse. He really took a long time to perfect this formulation. Um, yes, it's soybean oil, it's sodium lauryl sulfate, citric acid, and isopropyl alcohol, all commonly found ingredients. But just put together in a random mix isn't gonna get you the same results that you would with Green Cleaner. So when I first got Green Cleaner, it was a, it was a free sample about this big that I was using in my basement. And you know, it's been damn near 10 years since then. And you know, we're using bottles about this big now. But uh, you know, it's been a great product through and through. Um, and I know there's like a lot of different application rates for different uses. You know, tell me a little bit about the versatility of the product and you know how how to use it best. Totally. Uh, yeah. I mean, that two ounce sample you received back in the day. That's how we got the word out about Green Cleaner. Obviously, now it's grown into a much larger beast. Um, we offer everything up to a 55 gallon drum for large scale commercial operations. Um, then, as far as application rates go and the use of green cleaner. This product is good for anybody from the basement grower, one, two plants outside on your patio, all the way up to the largest cultivations in the world. I mean, there's really no place that this product doesn't fit. Can you drench with green cleaner? You can drench with green cleaner. Um, we actually developed a product called Root Cleaner uh, based on information we were receiving from our customers saying they were drenching root cleaner to handle those types of soil and, and root borne diseases and pests. Um, root cleaner is just a, a reformulation of green cleaner. We took some of the soybean oil content down so that you're not building that up in the root system and up the alcohol just a little bit. Well, the work you've put in, the work that Mark's put in, you know, I think it's uh, worth the ticket price for, uh, for the product you guys have come out with. Yeah, Garrett, it was great to be here. Thanks for having me. I've enjoyed our conversation here in this beautiful cultivation. I'm super excited to leverage it for free products. <laughs> <laughs>
many different technologies of LEDs, uh, several different types of HID bulbs. But the one thing that's most important to me that I've found that really counts is customer service. And Hortolux, they have far exceeded my expectations with customer service. Uh, you're probably battling humidity, especially at this time in the cycle. Uh, what are you doing to control that? We use Quest dehumidifiers. They're pretty much the standard in the industry. Quest Climate has amazing customer service and they pick up the phone after hours to troubleshoot any issues that you're having. They'll overnight you parts in an instant. They understand um, commercial crop production. They understand cannabis crop production. It's a high value crop. We can't afford to have issues with humidity and temperature swings. They understand the issues that we deal with on a daily basis. So you got a couple um, cookie strains in here. I know they've been you know, breaking into a lot of markets really quickly with these licensing agreements. Um, you know, what's it like to work with a company like that with such a prolific brand? You know, how do you acquire those genetics? Like, uh, you know, how, how has interacting with them been? Cookies is one of the largest brands in cannabis and it's a true honor to work with them uh, and to be able to experience all the genetics that they've worked hard to collect from uh, the best of the best breeders in the world. Some of those breeders include uh, Seed Junkie, um, Powers Up. Powers Up is uh, day one cookies guy. He was the one that created cereal milk. Gary Payton, uh, the fly, uh, he's coming out with some new stuff. 2090 is his new strain. Uh, haven't been disappointed with any of those varieties. Lemonade is another breeder that they work with. They supply uh, most of the sativa dominant varieties of the, the cookies lineup. Uh, so the caffeine, the medellin, uh, the lion's mane, that one's a very unique one. Uh, love their stuff, honestly. They have some of the most unique varieties. The genetic background in those crosses are exotic, truly exotic. Stuff that's come from outside the United States, you know, now collaborating with U.S. genetics. Well, Mike, I'm impressed with uh, everything I've seen today. You, your passion, your team's passion, you know, this flower room looks, smells great. Um, I'm excited to go hang out and get to smoke some of what we've been looking at today. Me too, me too. What's up guys? Appreciate you all taking the time to sit down with me. We're here in the post-harvest department. All you guys I'm sure have a very unique role. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourselves and what you guys do around here. Uh, my name's Leah. I am the uh, harvest head and so I help harvest and I see everything through trim and then transfer it to the vault. I'm Jake. I'm packaging. Um, so after it's come from the vault and I have all the orders lined out, I take all the products whether it's uh, for pre-rolls, flour, get it in the correct packaging and ship it off to distribution. I'm Anthony, uh, I'm the vault and inventory manager. So anything that is trimmed from Leah comes to me, gets processed, is recorded, and all of the uh, weights and everything are tracked through me and then are delivered to Jake after it is all ready to go. I'm Nate, I'm the distribution manager. Uh, any final products that are completed for orders come to my department. We do final checks. Uh, we check the metric information for the quantities, our lab information, make sure everything looks right. And we pack it up and send it out to the customers. Well, I know, uh, you know, throughout the rest of this facility, I've seen a lot of care and love going into everything coming out. Everything's looked and smelled beautiful. Everything we have on this table is some of the most impressive flour I've ever seen, honestly. And I'm, I'm not just saying that. I've been to a few grows in my day. So when it comes to curing and burping, are you guys, you know, in a glass jar? Are you in a tote? Are you in a turkey bag? What are you, what are you using uh, to keep that seal in between? Uh, so we use uh, True Liberty bags, which they're really great for a curing process. They're industrial strength, they meet all the FDA requirements, food grade, and they help preserve all of our terpenes, which is very important in the curing process. And when they're in the True Liberty bags, we put them in these white painter buckets, and that has a seal on them that helps keep all of our terpenes in. And then we do the burping process, which we release that and it releases all the moisture while still keeping our terpenes and everything in there. These True Liberty bags are great for a curing process. We've used them ever since I've been here and uh, they've been tremendous in helping our curing process get to where it needs to be. So you guys are rocking through a lot of pre-rolls here every month, but obviously, you know, the main event 
is the flower and you know all these beautiful buds coming out of this place. You know, in any given month, uh, how many pounds are you packaging and distributing out of this facility? Anywhere from 150 to close to 200 pounds. Of everything you guys are pumping out, what, what's your guys' favorite? I really like the pink rosé. It's got a really nice uh, fruity nose on it and uh, the smoke is good, so. That's my go-to. I like the cereal milk. Uh, it's one of our new ones from Cookies. Uh, it's a nice relaxing smoke. Uh, it's what I need at the end of the day. Um, for our redwoods, like sativa side, I'd probably say sweet tea. Uh, you gotta love the smell and the taste. It, it's just perfect. Nothing like a bowl of cereal, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for me, I love personally the Gary Payton. Uh, I love the smell on it, and it's a you know, great gassy smell. I love like pungent, like really like gassy smells, and uh, the high is just really good, uh, especially a hard hitting indica. I love indicas. I like you know relaxing and you know basically being knocked out when I smoke, so it's really good for me. And then, but on the sativa side, I gotta agree with Jake. Uh, our sweet tea is phenomenal. It's got a great nose and great high as well. Well, I really appreciate you guys having me. Post-harvest is such an important part of the process. Um, you can turn six months of work and ruin it in four days. So it's clearly not what's happening here. Kudos to you guys for putting in, putting in the hard work every day. Well, thank you. Thanks for being thank here. Thank you. How's it going, man? Hey, how you doing? Welcome. I'm Garrett with Deep Roots. I'm Ryan, I'm the director of purchasing here. It's a pleasure to meet you, dude. I was uh, over at Redwood Cultivation all day, seeing everything they got over there at their production facility. A lot of different brands, cookies, Tommy Chong, Dizzy Wright. Um, I was hoping to get some stuff off your shelf if you got something. We can definitely help you. A couple of my favorites, it comes right out of the Redwood Cultivation. It's their own brand. Con Leche is one of my personal favorites. Really tasty, slightly piney and sappy. And they also carry the Cookies line if you're interested in that. Yeah, Cookies is blowing up these days. I'd love to check out what you got on that shelf. It sounds like you know what you're talking about when it comes to Redwood. How long have you been working with them? So I've known Redwood and specifically Paul for a long time, almost before this industry got on its feet. Paul was actually uh, one of the innovators here bringing this to light, bringing the medical community into recreational. From there, uh, I would say for about three years now, two to three years, we have been working with Redwood, bringing on all of their different strains, their edibles, their cultivation. They do top tier work and we have to keep them on the menu. So is, uh, is purchasing a big part of your job here? Absolutely, purchasing is my job here. What I do is I make sure that we have the best brands at the top quality at a good price for our customers so that they have a very good customer experience and they feel like they got exactly what they wanted, flavor, strain, whatever it may be. We got some pretty sweet art on the walls. This place looks super fresh and clean. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, you know the dispensary that we have here. The dispensary, this is our <laughs> Eastern Express location, and this is our brand new location. That's why you see all the fresh cream walls. Everything looks new and crisp because we just opened this one. This is Eastern Express, so we're doing volume through here. We're making sure we get a good customer experience at a great pace. We here have six stores. We have two that are called Kind, and we now have four called The Dispensary throughout the state of Nevada. So is Kind, is that the same as the Cultivator Kind? So Kind is the Cultivator Kind, and we have dispensaries up north part, we called Mint. Okay. So cultivator kind and mint is all us. Oh, that's awesome. So you've totally vertically integrated, um, but it sounds like you're definitely giving a lot of love to other brands in the state and, and filling out the shelf with, you know, not just your own product, which I think is so important. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Customers want variety. They want to be able to make their own decisions and see things next to themselves. For me as a purchaser, it's absolutely essential that we keep our menu wide. You know, Nevada went rack, what, uh, three or four years ago? Um, medical a little bit before that. Uh, what's the biggest changes you've seen in the industry as a, as a buyer? Man, I, I mean, from first of all, of course, it's going to be pure volume, but now it's going to be accessibility to everybody. Everybody feels like they can be included in this club and not have to keep it such a secret. So being able to service everybody rather than a few has really been a blessing. Well, I've been drooling all day with uh, everything at the Redwood Grow. Um, so I think I'm ready to uh, pick up some of that flour, maybe some pre-rolls and uh, get out of here and smoke some of it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to me, checking out the stores and picking up that good Redwood flour that we have. Great to meet you, bud. Get to your bag and get you guys on out of here. Thank you so much.
What's uh, what's your connection to everybody here? My connection, man, I'm a, I'm a singer, old school singer and rapper from back in the day. And the name of my group is called Los Marihuanos, which in Spanish it means the potheads. And it's a name that my grandmother used to call my uncle and them. And they'll be smoking pot in the backyard. So you smoked a little bit of weed in your day. Oh, man. <laughs> Marihuana's been around before it was legal in, um, in the United States. So we've been smoking marijuana before marijuana was cool. I mean, I'm pretty sure marijuana was still pretty cool. No, but it was, it, was, it was just a felony. <laughs> it, it was just a felony. <laughs> that made it even cooler, I think. <laughs> I'm eating fucking these Tyson gummies, dude. Tyson gummies. These ears. Let's do it. I'll take an ear. You got really a fucking ear, bro. <laughs> the crew got a cruise out of here. It was great meeting all you guys. Seriously. Right on, bro. It was a pleasure sitting down. <laughs> nice smoking out with you guys. Always good to sit down with an OG and like hear those stories, man. My generation appreciates, you know what the pioneers have done for this industry. So oh, yeah. thank you guys. <laughs>